Welcome to the Get Real Podcast. Your high-octane boost of in-the-trenches, tell-it-like-it-is reality therapy for personal, business, and real estate investing success. With your hosts, powerpreneurs, Angela Thomas and Ron Phillips, it's time to get real. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Get Real podcast. I am your host, Ron Phillips. And man, I've got a special guest today. But before I bring her in and tell you all about her, make sure that you are that you subscribe to the podcast, that you share us with everybody. You can find us at getrealestatesuccess.com and you can find our company, which is RP Capital at rpcinvest.com. Check us out, visit us. And if you like what we do, certainly share us with everybody and make sure that you give us some, uh, some great feedback, five-star rating and all that good jazz. Chaley Ridge, one of my favorite people on the planet is with us today. Chaley, welcome to the show. Ronnie P., I am extremely <laughs> excited and grateful to be here. I'm so glad we connected. I think you're going to appreciate, your listeners going to appreciate the content of what we plan to talk about today. I'm excited. Ah, me too. So let me tell you a little bit about Chaley, those of you who don't know her. Gosh, Chaley, we've known each other for over a decade. I don't know how long, but we've been doing this for a long time. I think you've been doing it for, uh, what, almost two decades now? A little over. Can you believe it? Oh, yeah. Well, we're showing our age. Um, Not on camera, though. Um, (laughs) Neither one of us are old. I have a filter yeah. though on mine, so I'm, I'm, I, there's a filter you can put on the Zoom, so I'm good. Yeah. My, my crow's feet look good. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so Chaley's been doing this for a long time, but Ridge Lending, so Chaley Ridge, Ridge Lending, Ridge Lending's been in the business for a couple of generations, so decades. Chaley's been running the company for as long as I've known about the company, and there's, there are very few people in this industry, in the investment real estate world doing what we do, help our clients um, buy investment properties all over the country. Very few people who've been in the business long, doing this longer than me, Chaley is one of them, went through the meltdown at the same time I did. She's helped tens of thousands of people, I know, right? Uh, because we've done, we've done thousands of loans with you over the years. So has to have done tens of thousands of loans um, for, for her clients and I think the most important thing that Chaley brings to the, to the table is through all of that, she's an investor herself, so she understands us. In addition, she knows her depth of knowledge in this particular field that we're going to talk about today, only one little segment of this field is legendary in the business. People, everybody knows Chaley who's in this business, right? So welcome, Chaley. Officially welcome now that I've introduced you properly and people know just how bad to the bone you are. Thank you, Ron. That's very nice. All of the commentary, it it happens to all be true, folks. And then some, I'm, I am, I (laughs) am humble. I'm I'm pretty, I'm pretty great. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. (laughs) I love it. I'm pretty great. I sent Um, Chaley some humble pills earlier in the week so that she would be (laughs) prepped for the show. They're working. uh, So Chaley, I called you or texted you or something and said, you've got to come on and tell everybody about this cool This is not new, but I think it's going to be new to most everybody listening, this cool loan product that you have called the all-in-one loan. And this is not only for a a personal residence, but it's also, it can be used for investment properties too. Give us like a high level and then we'll dig into this thing just a little bit. Tell us a little bit about this thing. What is it? Okay. So yes, I think you're right. It will be relatively new to most of the people listening it has been around over the years here and there for primary residents. As you mentioned, it is very new for the investor and an investment property. Uh, just a quick tidbit. We were the second lender in the nation that was given access to this all-in-one for investors specifically. We launched it last year, May of 2019. And I'll tell you, um, for everybody that's listening, this thing is just, it's taken over. It's, it's going to be, I think, as, as the word starts to get out more and it's more mainstream, I'm seeing it really change people's focus and, and even their, their strategies and their goals, real estate goals. It's been phenomenal. And I, I'm sincerely excited to share 
how the the concept and mechanics of this thing work. So quickly, high level. This is a first lien HELOC, okay? Home equity line of credit. Most people know what HELOC is. And if they think about a HELOC, they think about it as a second lien position mortgage, right? Something that goes behind some 30-year fixed mortgage that it will typically, the term's gonna be something like a 10-year interest-only draw, and then it becomes a 20-year repay, right? That's, that's the typical home equity line of credit. Uh, very difficult to get on investment properties as well. So that's one of the primary differences. But when you think about a line of credit, and what we'll probably spend a lot of our time doing today is comparing it to the 30-year fix, just for that comparison purpose, um, let me explain that a 30-year fixed, everybody knows that that is an amortized closed-ended loan. This is an open-ended adjustable rate loan that has some compounding effects that greatly reduce the amount of interest that can accrue over time. But I think even more importantly, as we dig into this thing, investors are going to realize that independent of all the significant interest that can be saved, the flexibility of this particular loan for an investor to have a line of credit that can be paid down very, very quickly without changing anything to your ordinary spending habits, your income, nothing changes at all. And now having this line of credit at your disposal to do what you want, how you want, for, what you, for, for whatever it is, you don't have to re-pre-qualify, you don't have to pay closing costs again to tap into equity. Effectively, how I've been describing this thing is that it it turns you into your own bank. You become your own banker with this product. Okay, it's so let's super cool. so let's um, just really quickly let's recap. So normal loan that we almost all of us get, right? We get a thirty-year fixed, usually like some Fannie Mae product. You get a super low rate. It's fixed for thirty years, and the amortization. If you guys um, can imagine in your mind an amortization schedule, it starts out really high. You're paying a lot of interest in the beginning, and then over time, a lot of time, like it really starts to see an arc coming down on the, in, on the interest amount of interest paid in you know, 10, 10, 15, 12. 20 years, right? It's after that that you really see that fall off. Most people, incidentally, they don't keep properties that long. So you pay a lot of interest uh, up front. But this particular loan, is, it's, it's not that way. It is the whole loan is an equity line of credit. It, it, so it's a line of credit. It's, it's not necessarily an equity line of credit. The HELOC, usually when I think of that, Chaley, I think of home equity is what's left over after my loan. So I go get a loan on that piece, right? Which, but you're saying we just use a, an, a line of credit for the purchase or for a refinance out of a, out of a loan. And there's one loan on the product, property. It just happens to be a line of credit. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. Yes, it is a first, that means first lien line of credit. So there's nothing in front of it. This replaces, and that's the piece that I didn't mention a second ago. So the reason it's called all in one is because it's replacing both an existing mortgage, if there is one, and the individual's checking and savings account. Both of those okay. things are now combined into one. Okay. So everybody's head exploded now. So, <laughs> so you're going to have to like, Help us understand, and let's dumb this down to my level, Chaley. You hey. know me pretty well, so let's, let's really dumb this down. How in the world... So just walk us through this. So now I've got this loan, and let's just use one of my properties, right? So I, I own a property in Memphis. It's a $100,000 house. I'm going to go get this cool loan on it. I assume that the scenario is the same. It's an 80% loan or a 25% LTV. 75 on a 75? purchase and rate in terms 70 on a cash out. Okay, so I've got a $75,000 now equity line of credit on this property. It's worth a hundred. And you're telling me that now I've replaced my checking account and my savings account. How, does, how do they all intermingle and, and what's going on with, with yeah. this thing? So first of all, let me just explain that the banking features that are combined in this loan are completely automated. So everything that you have, we've become accustomed to right now with our B of A or our Chase or our Wells Fargo, whatever it may be, exactly the same. You've got mm -hmm. online bill pay, you've got routing numbers, you've got debit cards, paper checks, all of that stuff identical to what it is now. But instead of letting your depository income, remember this is your new checking account, so your paycheck, your gross rents, your dividends, your interest, your child support, your alimony, your social security, whatever the source of income is, instead of sitting it in your just regular checking savings, 
doing what? Nothing. Well, yeah, waiting for me to spend it. Doesn't right. wait very long, Jaylee. Right. Dollar for dollar, instead of leaving it there, we're going to take it and we're going to put it over here into the all-in-one, the HELOC, reducing our principal balance, again, dollar for dollar, for as many days of a 30-day billing cycle as possible. Let me explain. Let's, and I think examples are great. Yep. So I'm going to use a round number of 100000 We have a $100,000 line uh, of credit that has a $100,000 balance. Those are one and the same for our example. Okay. Okay. And I make $10,000 a month and I make that income. I, I receive that income on day one of the, the first of the month. Okay. I'm going to take my $10,000. I'm going to plunk it into my checking slash mortgage HELOC. Okay. And my $100,000 balance is now what? 90,000, right? Yep. So for as many days of a 30 day billing cycle that I can leave that 10 grand in against the outstanding principal balance, the amount of interest that can accrue is now on 90,000 versus 100,000. So what is very commonly happening is that the individual, I'm going to take my credit card and I'm going to pay every cent of my monthly living expenses and put it on this credit card. So my car payment, my credit cards, my food, my gas, my mortgages, my utilities, cell phone, everything is being paid on my credit card. And a lot right? of us so do I that. Can, a lot of us do that anyway. For my, right. For miles I, or whatever it might be. Okay. So I'm going to do that, but then on day 29, for example, before the card itself accrues any interest, I'm simply going to go into my checking account, HELOC, and I'm going to pay it off. Online bill pay, credit card is now at a zero balance. I have utilized my depository income to my distinct advantage, and I have removed the amount of interest that would otherwise normally accrue for 99% of the 30 day billing cycle. And then I just continue to redo that over and over again. So there's a compounding effect at work here, right? That's okay, the first so, piece. So real quick on the first piece then, this only works if you don't spend more money than you make every month, I'm assuming, right? Thank because you. otherwise you're gonna hit the cap and then you're gonna fill up your credit card, you can't pay it back off. Yes, and I mean, obviously there's gotta be some discipline. This loan will not work for somebody, exactly as you said, that has 50 bucks left over at the end of the month. Okay. Right. right. But to, to go back to our example, what we're talking about is just utilizing our depository income, doing everything that we normally would do in the month. Okay. Except right. for now, we're just paying everything on the card before we have to pay that off before it accrues interest. So that is compounding reduction of interest accrual number one. The second thing to your point is residual income, discretionary income with savings, right? Typically speaking, when I run the scenario, um, there's an online interactive simulator. I'll give you the link before we're done here so everybody can kind of check it out. But typically, we find that the individual that has at least a 10% per month in residual income or savings, so of my okay. 10000 as long as I've got about $1,000 left over that, again, currently is just sitting in my savings or checking doing goose egg, zero, instead of sitting it there, I'm just going to leave it in against my balance. And every single month that I do that, it continues to drive it down and drive it down. That's compounding effect number two. Okay. All right. So I get it. So, so I start with 100000 I pay off 10000 of it with my income when it comes in. I use the thing during the month on my credit card. I have my credit cards now at $9,000. I pay it off. And this loan is now at 99000 instead of 100000 I do it again next month, except for now, instead of it being at 90000 it's at 89000 And I'm whacking at this thing, except for I'm, I'm whacking at it with other people's money, basically. Right. Right. So my, right. my income, which is my money, but, but that income could be coming from rental properties, could be coming from any kind of different places, right? Exactly right. And so, yes, that's the second compounding piece. And the first, obviously, is the daily accrual of interest. Every HELOC works the same. Ah, the interest accrues that. every day, right? Yep. And it's based on, that interest accrual is based on that day's principal balance or whatever you owe that day and that month's fully indexed rate. We'll talk about the fully indexed rate, I'm sure, at some point. So the longer you can keep that ten grand in, that daily accrual is based off the less. So both of those two compounding effects put together has a profound impact on the amount of interest savings that you're going to see on this thing. And remember, so, that's your money. Your right, access so 24-7. My guess is this thing has a higher rate because 
equity lines of credit generally do, right, than a Fannie Mae loan product. So it has a higher rate. But if I'm not using the full amount of that, then there's going to be a reduction of what my, what my average daily rate would be because I'm, I'm paying on less money. Yes. So, and then I, I didn't say that probably as profound as you would probably say it, but that, that's the general idea, right? I'm, I may be paying more interest, but I'm paying it on less money. So in effect, my interest rate is, is either the same or less, I'm assuming. Exactly right. And so, and I, so let me say something really quick. So when this thing, you know, when, when I had this and I was going to deliver it to my, my database and my clients, and I've known of the concept, it's called sweep account or velocity banking. Some people may be familiar with those terms. So I've known about it in the past, but to really dig in and look at this thing, just so that people kind of get a feel for it. And you know, I've been in finance for 20 years. You've already said that to everybody. It took me a week, man, before I could really, before the light bulb went off. I mean, I had to look at this thing forwards and backwards and upside down and inside out before I really conceptualized what was happening here. Right. So with regard to the rate, that's the first thing that I focused on. That's the first thing everybody focuses on. One of the ways that I w was able to put it into perspective for myself, it's no longer about, it's about interest saved, not interest earned. So the interest rate itself, without turning everybody off and they're going to think that I'm a, 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 an, a used car salesman, the interest rate is no longer material. It really does not matter. And when you see the, the math and you compare this thing legitimately to a 30-year fixed, the math won't lie. It'll tell you, and the interest rate is irrelevant. Folks, it's, what I heard was it's just like Shakira's hips. <laughs> I won't lie. That's what I heard. <laughs> so, uh, well, so we've got this thing. It's sitting out there. We're dumping money into it. I'm sorry. I couldn't <laughs> help it. I mean, the, the Super Bowl just happened, and, you know, I, anyway. Okay, so um, we've got this thing. We're paying maybe a little bit higher interest rate. What's the velocity of this thing? And, and then there's, there's, so there's people out there that live on a, on a budget, kind of like what you were just describing, right? They have X amount every month left over, yada, yada. Well, then there's other people like maybe me and some other business owners who have big chunks of money that come in. Like I have big chunks of money that I take out of my company in, in addition to the little, uh, to the normal money that comes in, right? That we operate on. <clears throat> but I have these big chunks. How does, a, how does the bank look at, and I'm, I'm asking this personally because I'm actually really interested, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, 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 constantly have, I'm constantly caught between a liquidity battle and, a, and this pay down debt battle, right? Because this HELOC, if I, so if I take $100,000 and chunk it in on this, on this HELOC, how does a bank look at that, Chaley, uh, for me as a bankable person, right? So I'm going to go out and get a, Freddie Mac loan for an apartment building and I need half a million dollars worth of liquidity and I just chunked a hundred of my, of my 500,000. I just chunked it in on this, on this deal and it's sitting in there. Do I have to take it, I have to then take it back out and put it over here or can I just leave it sitting inside of the house account, checking slash savings kind of account? How, how does that work? Those are considered sourced and, seasoned, sourced and seasoned liquid funds. So the 100 grand that's now sitting in against your, your line of credit, pull those out. Those are perfectly acceptable right away. There's no seasoning. I know that that's absolutely true on the residential side. I'm 99% sure that on a commercial basis too, it would be looked at exactly the same. The liquidity is there. It's liquid, accessible, ready to go. Okay. And so then I can get a statement from this cool online thing that has all of the things that, that my Chase account has. Yep. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, so talk to us about the velocity then because – so this is, this is really hard. I've actually played around with this simulator a little mm -hmm. bit. So I have a little bit of, a, of an understanding about the velocity of this thing. But talk to us a little bit about how this thing, how this thing can help people in a couple of different scenarios. So – one is just to lay out debt, right? Just to pay debt off. But the other one is to actually accelerate wealth accumulation, right? Because it sounds like a pretty cool... Like, for instance, I use a very similar feature with a whole life insurance product, 
right? I chuck Philosophy money banking. into this life insurance product. And then, you know, my money is still sitting there. I borrow it out. It's kind of the kind of a same principle, but this, this seems like maybe even like leveled up a, a tiny little bit. Yeah. So it's exactly the same principle. This is um, unique in that now I'm not, I'm not as clear on the details of the whole life insurance policy, but this is unique and it has those extra banking features. It's 30 years. I don't know. What, what, how does the term of the, the life insurance policy work? Well, it's, I'm not completely, even... it's completely okay. different and it has none of the banking features whatsoever. It's like I have to request money and, and then it comes to me and right. stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's not at all like a bank account like what you just described. It's a little clunkier, but you're right. The same principle does apply, right? And in, in truth... An individual could do what we're describing with a second lien HELOC. They're going to be limited and it's going to be super clunky, but the principle ends up being the same. But to your, to your question, the velocity of this, how does this create real wealth? You know, you've got this line of credit again for 30 years, and I should probably describe this 30-year line of credit. What will happen is, I mentioned earlier that the traditional HELOC has a 10-year interest-only draw, and then it becomes a 20-year repay where you can't draw on it anymore. This is a 30-year line of credit. You have access to the line for full 30 years. However- Okay, pause, time out, time out. I don't think everybody understands how important that is unless they lived like in California in 2007, where everybody had a HELOC and they all got shut down in 2007. 2007, 2008, if you were lucky enough to make it to 2008, then it got shut down. They all got shut down, right? So talk us through that just a minute because that, that's, a, that's actually a really big deal. I don't think people actually consider right now because everything's going swimmingly and we're not in that crazy time period. But when you have chucked a bunch of money into a, a HELOC and they shut it off and now yeah. you can't access it anymore, that's a big deal, Chaley. Well, and, and that, that principle could potentially still apply here. That has nothing to do with the 30-year term. If, for example, this is about value. So if we were to see, and that's a, a very important point, if we were to see a repeat of the 0809, I think most people listening would agree that that's highly, highly unlikely to the impossible. But if we did, um, and you got a line of credit based on a $500,000 value that you started with, and your line of credit's 300000 and overnight that value dropped to 200,000, the bank is not going to continue to give you that access to that equity when it doesn't exist anymore, right? They'll freeze the line based on the LTV values and the new value of the property. Depository income though, it's an FDIC insured bank who services all of this. The depository income that they can see from your paychecks and stuff, that will not be frozen. Those, those funds will not be retained. So if I chuck $100,000 into it, they can't, they're not going to take that away from me. Your money from, yes, if the paper trail comes from here to here, absolutely, they will not. Okay, that's, so the guys, that's a big deal. Um, and, that's, and that's not necessarily how a typical home equity line of credit works. And, that, and that, so that's a really big deal for someone who needs um, some liquidity, right? Because if you're chucking a ton of money to pay, to quote, pay debt off or to park it on the sidelines so that you can strike whenever the iron's hot and then you don't have access to your money anymore. That's a, that's a really big deal. So sorry, I just wanted to uh, yeah. pause on that because that's, that's a really big deal. It is. The fact that you don't have to requalify for it either for 30 years is a pretty big deal too, right? Yeah, right. Like I was saying earlier, so access to earned equity or appreciation as it, as it continues. Now the line amount is going to continue to be the line amount even if the property appreciates, but yeah, you don't have to go back out and pay closing costs and things to gain access to, to what, what's there. Um, but what I was going to mention is, is that in month one of year 11, how this is going to work is the limit will start to go down. Let me give you an example. Round numbers. Let's say you have a limit of 100 grand. In month one of year 11, it reduces by one 240th percent. That number represents the number of months left. 20 yep. years equals 240 months. So it reduces one 240th percent, which in our example would now leave you with a limit of 99,760. The math is simple there, Damn right? It. I'm out. You lost. <laughs> you I'm lost. out. <laughs> I, I can't do it under those terms, Chaley. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Deal breaker. I, I get it. But that so let me, okay, let me, let me finish the thought though. The, the whole, the wealth building. So what you guys will be able to do, and the simulator is key, I think, and I, I, I like the visual. I like to see how the mechanics work. 
when you plug in your numbers, if you've got your fields in there correctly on the results page, it's going to be able to tell you on a month by month basis, comparing the two 30 year fix, for example, to the all in one, but on the all in one, you'll be able to see exactly how much equity has been built in addition to what maybe you even started with. And the simulator will allow you to go in and identify on month 24, you're going to pull 30,000 back out and, and put it as a down payment on a hundred thousand dollar property. Right. Right. But in doing that, if you guys go in there and mess around that way, if you, if you make the simulator account for that activity of the withdrawal down the road, whenever, right. Make sure that you add the income on the deposits page, right? Let's say it's going to yield a thousand dollars a month of gross rents. Make sure you stick that in there in the deposit because that will make a difference because you're going to retain, what, two, three hundred bucks of that. You leave a yep. thousand in for 29 days before you make that mortgage payment, but then you'll also keep in there the, the passive income, right? That long-term passive income. You got to account for both of those things if you decide to, to play with the simulator and look at the results from that perspective. The point is you'll continue to do this over and over again because you're able to pay the balances off so quickly you could, you got this line of credit. You could do Burr strategies, a big one that people are using it for. That um, is um, buy, yeah. reno- buy, renovate, rent, r- redo. Buy, rehab, <laughs> rent, refi. There you ah. go. What's well, <laughs> a bunch close. of R's? It yeah, means yeah. get a rental property when it's crap and then put a tenant in it. That's what it means. After you fix, fix it up, and it put up, a of tenant course. In it. Yeah. 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 Somebody came up with this and it's, it's really fun to say Burr. It's really fun to say. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the last, just on a side note, Chaley, on the last episode, I told everybody I was never going to say the term turnkey again. And I hear I did. I just did it. But I, I, I hate that term. I don't hate Burr, though, because it's kind of cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't hate that one. Especially for the right property in the right market. It's very That's cool. That's right. Burr. That's right. Burr. Burr. Okay, well, cool. Here. So I played around with this simulator a little bit. It already has built into it all of the, I don't know, the, all the inner workings, all the interest rate and how the thing's set up and all that good stuff. So I don't have to know any of that. All I really need to know in order to play with this is what my current loan structure is, right? What, what I have left over at the end of the month, my income and that kind of stuff, right? I just need to have a general conception of, of what it is. Yes. Now you can, you can run the simulator two different ways. You can run it uh, comparing it to your existing loan, the one you have right now, just to see if it kicks its ass. Can I say ass on a podcast? You, you, you can not. And thank you. Now I have to put a, like, I have to put, <laughs> some kind of a, I have to put an E on my, I have to E on my thing now. That's okay. So daily. you can, you Ugh. can look at, you can look at the simulator and compare the all in one to an existing loan as it is today, how long you've had it, everything will be taken to, into account or okay. you compare it to a new 30-year fixed loan. It'll, it'll d- differentiate. It'll ask you at the very, the very first page which you're comparing to. You'll be able to see that. But um, Jaylee, how many of these can I have? Seven per person. Now, that may not be applicable. You may not, it may not be to your advantage because remember, if you have seven, that's for the individual that has a lot of, of depository access and some decent residual income enough to spread out against seven. It may not be to the individual's advantage, but that is the, the guideline I can get seven per individual, qualified individual right now. Okay. And this is only on residential properties? Up to four units. Yes, sir. Up to four units. So guys, you can do duplexes and fourplexes. That's really cool. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, Chayla was, would you say number two in the country on this? So she's kind of a big deal. I'm, I she's told kind you. Of a big deal. I'm just going to request that you get these boneheads to do it on commercial properties too now. So just run it's, that up the flagpole, Chaley. Okay. I'd like to do it, it on, I'd like to do it on some commercial property. Okay. So <clears throat> you, so once I run the simulator and I go, okay, cool. I'm, I really dig this. I think I want to do this, but I don't know with all of my different properties if I should do one of these or two of these or three of these or whatever. That's probably out of the scope of this. Well, I know it is because I already used the simulator. So that's out of the scope of the simulator. I can't do that on the simulator. I could do one at a time, but it's not going to tell me if I'm an idiot to go get five of these things or two of them or if I should just have one. That's where Chaley, the legendary uh, loan 
whatever you what what do you call yourself? Just legend. Legend is fine. Just, just, just legend. Just le- yeah. Uh, yeah. Just legend. <laughs> That's where the legend comes in, right? That's where you can say, Ron, you have all these properties and I'm looking at this whole thing and you should probably do one on this particular property over here. This is the best one, or you should do two or three or however it however it turns out. So yes, absolutely right. You could you could simulate, let's say, four different results. But remember, in doing that, you're going to have to account for the depository income and spread it across the different ones and just see what the results do. You could theoretically, you can't do five in one simulation. You'd have to, you'd have to break it up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so I think the, the main point is, and here's the other thing, I guess, you know, so once you start to get a ton of different loans, whether it's this loan or another different kind of loan, it's important you have somebody who can help you understand what the hell you're doing because this gets complicated the more loans that you get. And part of my question earlier about liquidity, that's a, that's a legitimate concern because if you don't have enough liquidity, then you start getting hit on your program. You know, you're going to get, going to have to put more money down. You may not even be able to even be able to get the loan. So thinking through a lot of that stuff is really, really important. And having somebody who understands loans really, really well is important. Like the legend, um, Jay Lee Rich. Um, one, one of the best I've ever met at actually helping people plan out this crazy real estate thing. Because it is kind of crazy, Jay Lee. I mean, you see somebody who has a ton of different loans on a ton of different properties in a lot of different markets. It gets, it gets really complicated really fast. And I don't think people really bear that in mind when they're, when they're setting out on this journey a lot of times. And, and there's, there, the rules are pretty defined. And if you don't know what the rules are and you don't know how it relates to your qualifications, you're right. It can get away from you quick and then it could pre- preclude your qualifying altogether. You know, one of the examples or the, the analogies that I give, uh, it's, it really is like learning a new language, the financing piece. And I think everybody agrees the learning curve in real estate just on its own exponentially is increased when you have to start layering and all the financing and the guidelines and the DTI and the, it's, it's a lot for sure. I, I've spent a lot of time learning. I mean, that's why the, the legend moniker fits. I just, what, I, what she meant to say was she spends a lot of time <laughs> geeking out on this stuff. Um, there's, there are a few people in the country who actually enjoy geeking out on this type of stuff. So well, we appreciate you um, sharing some of your geekdom with us in this particular field. This product actually looks really, really cool. And if Chaley will answer a text from me, I will, I'm going to need to find out a little bit more about it and which property would be um, the best to do this on um, for me. Um, so let's recap real quick. This thing is uh, first lean only lean on a property. It's a, it's an equity line of credit. It can be on a primary residence, a secondary, a second house, or it could be on an investment property. It doesn't matter. One to four units. And it has all of the cool banking features that you would, that you would find at Chase or any other big bank so that you can literally use this thing as a bank account. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, Chaley. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Thanks for I'm stopping by and, um, and, and educating us on this. So if, so if somebody's interested in playing around with this simulator that we've been talking about for 30 minutes now, well, where can they find it and where can they find the legend? Where do you hang out these days? I know it's not on Facebook. So where do, where do you hang out? These uh, days? I have a cave right here, actually. Can you see? This is, this is it. I'm, uh, it's I've a cave in Portland. Portland if anybody wants to find her, she's, uh, you're still in Portland, right? <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. That hasn't changed. Okay, she's in a cave in Portland. How do, they, how do they get with the legend? How do they find you and the simulator? So, guys, you'll go to our website, www.ridgelendinggroup.com. On the website homepage, if you scroll down just a tad, you'll see a link. It says Launch Simulator. That'll take you to the all-in-one simulator. It's very easy. Once you get to the results page, FYI, there is a save option in the top right. It'll give you a key code. You can save your work and go back and, and play with it wherever you want. They can email us info at ridgelandinggroup.com or they can call us at 855-74-RIDGE is an easy way to and Everybody, if you are a um, skimmer um, like I am <clears throat> and you get to the place where it says that you need a, like a code, you have to actually read the fact that it says returning user. 
uh, <laughs> if you're an initial user, you don't have a code. There's no code to put in there, right? So it's for your returning users, just so everybody knows my level of, I don't, I don't, I don't read a skim. And you're I, my favorite. I, I know, it's great. Jaylee, thank you so much. It was uh, great to connect and catch up. I think everybody learned a ton. Guys, if you got a ton out of this, um, to, to thank Jaylee, the best way to do that is to put a five-star review for my podcast. Uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the only way to do it. Make sure you leave a really good glowing comment on there, but put her name in it on my podcast. That's the best way to do it because she will obviously see that, um, but it will definitely benefit me. So, that's awesome. Jaylee, thank you so much. Everybody out there, you can find us on getrealestatesuccess.com. Share us with your friends. Make sure to look us up, rpcinvest.com. Until next week, thank you guys. Appreciate it. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com. <laughs>